Hi, this is Algebra 2, Lesson 78. We're starting on page 324. And we're going to talk about force vectors at a point. In physics, much effort is devoted to understanding the relationships that force, mass, weight, velocity, and acceleration have to each other. Forces have directions and magnitudes, so we use vectors to show them. Okay, on page 324 we have this picture. We have two ropes attached to a point and pulled on with the directions and magnitudes shown. What is the resultant force on the point? Okay, so this point is being pulled in two different ways. It's being pulled this way with a force of 40 and at an angle of 30 degrees. It's being pulled this way with a force of 70 and at an angle of 45 degrees. To see this problem a little bit better, we're going to redraw this as two triangles. So the triangle on the left That was not very well drawn, but the angle is 45 degrees. The vector is 70. It's a force of 70, so 70 newtons per square meter, or uh, there are a lot of different ways to measure force, but at this point we're just going to leave it at 70. The point is being pulled this way at 30 degrees with a force of 40. Okay, here are bright triangles. Okay, we can find the resultant force by finding the rectangular coordinates. So, here we have, let's call this A and this B and this A and this B. So in order to find the bright part, we're going to do 70 times the cosine of 45 degrees to find B. It's going to be 70 times the cosine of 45 degrees. To find A, that's going to be 70 times the sine of 45 degrees. Over here to find um, B, which is the right, we're going to do 40 times, and this angle is 30 degrees, I forgot to label that, 40 times the cosine of 30 degrees, and this is going to be 40 times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so this is going to equal 49.5, and so is this, because the cosine and the sine of 45 degrees are the same. This is going to equal 34.64. This is going to equal 20. So to get the resultant force, we're going to put these in um, rectangular coordinates and then add them together. So in this case, this would be negative, because we're going to the left, 49.5 right, plus, we're in the second coordinate, so this will be plus 49.5 degrees up, plus, now this B is in the first coordinate, so this is positive, 34.64 right, plus, and our up is 20. Okay, we're going to add these together, and they come up with negative 14.86 right, plus 69.5 up. So the force on the point is going to pull it towards the left 
and up, and it's going to be stronger up than it is to the left, which makes which makes sense because both of these are pulling up, and it's pulling a little stronger to the left than it is to the right. So this is a reasonable answer. Okay. Okay. If we wanted to express this force in polar coordinates, we would have to draw this new angle. And that probably wasn't nearly steep enough. Well, of course it wasn't. Okay, so if this point is 70, then 14 is going to be like a fourth of that. So it's going to be something like this. It's a very steep angle. Okay? So our right is 14.86. Our up is 69.5. Here's our theta. Remember, we're taking the theta from the x, not from the y, and not from here to start with. We're going to take the theta from the x. And this is our resultant force. Okay, so to find the angle, we're going to take the tangent, we're going to say that the tangent of theta here is, and it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, so 69.5 over 14.86. So theta is going to equal the inverse tan of this fraction, which is 77.93 degrees. Okay, that means this angle is 180 degrees minus 77.93, which is, so the force angle is 180 minus 77.93, which is 102.07 degrees. Okay? To find our force vector, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So force is going to equal the square root of 69.5 squared plus 1486 squared, right, which equals 71.07. .07. So our resultant force in polar form is going to be 71.07 .07 at 102.07 degrees. Okay? Here is a point, point acted on by a push force. So this force is pushing, and a pull force as shown. Find the resultant force on the point. Okay, our point can't tell the difference between a push force and a pull force. So, to make life a little simpler, we could rewrite this like this. So this is our our force pushing it this way. It's a push force, but our point doesn't know it's being pushed. It just needs, knows that it's being moved that way. And this is 16. And this is 30 degrees. And we're just doing this because it makes a nicer triangle. You can do it either way. Okay? So the push's rectangular coordinate is it's going 10 to the right and it's not going up at all. It's only being pushed to the right. The other reason we move it over here is so we're starting at a point and we don't have to worry about um, whether it's a positive right or a negative right. Okay, so it's a positive right. To the point it feels like a positive right. Okay, so the rectangular coordinate for this guy, the pole vector was 16 at 30 degrees. So the right is 16 times the cosine 
of 30, which is 13.86 to the right, and the up is going to be 16 times the sine of 30, which is going to be 8 up. The resultant force is the sum of the two vectors, so we have 10 right plus 0 up plus 13.86 right plus 8 up. We add these together and we get 23.86 right plus 8 up. Okay, to find the polar coordinates for, th for this angle, for this point, for this force, to find the polar coordinates for this force, we can redraw it. Okay, so this is 23, so Let's see, if this is 8, then this is going to be about 3 times more than that. So that'll be about here. So our point is going to be right about there, which is about 23.86 to the right and 8 up. So here's our right angle. This is 23.86. This is 8. Here's our theta. We're in the first quadrant. To find the theta, we're going to take um, the tangent inverse, right? Well, the tangent of theta is going to equal the opposite over the adjacent, so that's 8 divided by 23.8. 8, 6. So theta is going to equal the inverse tan of 8 over 23.86, which equals 18.54 degrees. Okay, so that's our theta. Our hypotenuse here, the magnitude of our force is the square root of 23.86 squared plus 8 squared, which equals 25.17. So the resultant force in polar form is going to be 25.17 at 18.54 degrees because it's in the first quadrant. Okay, that's it for that lesson. Let me know if you have any questions. Try the practice problems and do all the problems from the lesson. Thank you.